Um, I don't know where to start. I've forgotten what I've got in all these bags. And everything's really dirty and dusty. Yeah. I can see a cushion cover that I want to take out the bag. Bag with all our hammocks in that we used to sell. So the reason we've been and got this fabric out of the loft or the attic is because we need to try and keep some warmth in and I thought we could put it over the door. Um, I've got some other fabrics in here which I don't know what I'm going to use on yet but I bought them at the time because I like them. I'll put that there. Um, these were curtains we used to have over a patio door with a pelmet. Uh, so I bought this because I like chickens and that's why I've got all my chicken stuff here. But I think I need to interline them. So I'm going to have to take them apart, which is a shame, but um, yeah, they need to be thicker. So I made these probably 15 or 20 years ago, <laughs> quite a long time ago. So <clears throat> this is where it's, this is where the curtain's going to go going to be a bit tricky this is going to have to be moved and the pole is going to have to go along the top um, over the top of this unit here so I'm just going to measure 23. so I've got to go and find one of my curtain poles which I think is in the barn and take the curtain apart and we we need some interlining in it to make it warmer and bulk it out a bit. So just hold that then yep. tight so I can pull it. Yeah, see that's that's only 39 wide. And I have to allow six inches either side of the curtain, so I'm going to have to take, I think I'll take the half a width off there and add it on the other side, because I've got one and a half widths here. Okay. And Sounds good to me. Yeah, not that they're, they're not that, about. they weren't that full because I didn't have yeah. a lot of fabric, so. Um, you know best, good. darling, you know best. So it's going to be 54 wide. Right, yeah, sounds good. Anyway, the reason we're doing this, of course, is um, 
to <laughs> just help insulate the house where we can because uh, we have a number of issues um, which I'll show you in a sec but I'm going to go and get changed because I've got a little job which is also going to help us um, get this place that little bit warmer for, for the winter because last year it was a bit chilly in here wasn't it? I couldn't come in here, it was too cold. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't know how you stood there and cooked. Because <laughs> I did, I don't know. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go and get changed and I'll show you one or two of the problems and then um, I'll get on with the job I'm going to do. We have gaps where there should be windows. We have windows with no glass. We have windows with polythene and we have windows that have um, masking tape. We have doors that have gaps underneath them and we have doors that have gaps in them. And of course we have a dodgy boiler. But what we do have that's going to come in very useful this winter is our old log burner from the UK. Uh, we bought it with us, uh, but we haven't got the flu, etc. for it. So I need to get some parts to commission it. Uh, but we're in the ancient kitchen. This is the ancient fireplace with all its uh, old metalwork here. So we're going to be spending a lot of time in the kitchen. Uh, we love cooking. We love you know, eating. Who doesn't? Um, this is going to be a very nice sociable place, certainly long term, but this winter we're going to definitely try and utilise this room. Uh, but there's no heating at all um, in this part of the house. So today's task is the process of starting to get this commissioned. And so what we're going to do uh, probably later today is go to the local uh, Brickos, the do-it-yourself stores, etc., and have a quick look at what parts we need. We need to run the flue up, etc. This chimney um, doesn't go all the way up to the roof. Uh, that's been decommissioned at some point and taken down. But I can go up a good two metres or so and then come out just under the roof uh, and then out and over. So, Or I could go straight up and directly out, out of the roof. So I'll have a look at which option's best. Um, so we'll go... And have a look, price up various parts. And the difference between this sort of job in Britain and here in France, um, in the past I would have, within two or three clicks, uh, found out the legislation and the requirements, etc. And I would have been able to go online at the various DIY stores, see what they've got, work out all the bits that I need, write it all down. And then I could either buy it online or, or go to the DIY store and get it. Uh, but here in France it's a bit tricky to find the legislation's not as easy, uh, but I've found it. And the websites here of these stores are very poor. They don't generally have all the products on them. And those that do, you know, they may not be the right product for what I'm trying to do. So the best way of doing it is the old fashioned way of going to visit the store. And I think I'm going to end up visiting two or three different Brico stores. <laughs> Um, that seems to be the way here, and I think I'm even going to have to go further afield. Um, so it's the start of the process rather than the end, but we're hoping within a week or two we'll get this up and running. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is this has got years and years and years of soot um, on it. Now, we've been having a conversation about it. It does need cleaning, but it's a question of how clean do we want it? Do we want to take this back to absolutely brand new? Um, or do we want to show the history? So how far do we go with it? I would like to, I, I don't have a problem with this, but I would like it to clean up a little bit better, especially around the edges. Um, the pointing doesn't look particularly good. It's crumbling here. So we're gonna have to repoint in places. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, see what I can do today to try and clean it up without making too much mess and dust and then we'll take it from there really. Um, I think Susie would prefer it to be a little bit cleaner than I want it to be so we'll have to have a conversation or two about that. 
So that's that's the task for today to start the process of getting this installed. And um, what it's sitting on, uh, two big metal plates. Um, they are in here, and what I did, I took them outside and I I've, I've ground them down back to their metal, and they're all oxidised and they're really lovely actually. But of course they're going to be hidden under the log burner here. But um, on the back, behind these log burners, there's usually a metal plate. And there was a metal plate when we first got here. And I'll show it to you in a minute. It's, it's next to me. And the purpose of the metal plate is to radiate heat back into the room and also to protect the brickwork because they can become, they can crumble and become fragile. Um, now, if I put the metal plate that we've got, you're not going to see it. It's going to be hidden. So we're probably going to have to get a bigger one. And they're easily available. You find them at Vive Greniers and Emus and whatever. And they range from 25 euros to 100. So we'll have a look at that. But I'll show you this one that came out of here. And here is that plate. And the first glimpse you got of this was in episode 5 when we showed you our kitchens. It was there at the back of the uh, fireplace. But we've pulled it out since. And of course the obvious problem is there's a piece missing. It's uh, obviously broken off at some point. Um, Maybe it just became brittle with all the heat uh, over time. Uh, but anyway, I we haven't given up hope of finding this piece. It's not in the fireplace, but we're finding pieces of metal and all sorts all over the place here. So we haven't completely lost hope in uh, finding that. But anyway, th these uh, back plates are normally quite ornate. You can see here there's a, a character here, a human being, and a four-legged creature here. Um, don't quite know what that creature is. Um, never really looked that closely, if I'm honest. And up here, it's ornate. So they're they're nice these things, but um, I don't think this would be practical to put behind the log burner. So we'll find a use for it somewhere. Um, don't know where. Maybe above the fireplace. Yeah, maybe I could mount it above the fireplace here, so a little nod to the history. Uh, that welcome to our farm sign, That's uh, the only reason we put it up there was because there happened to be a nail sticking out of the wall. So we thought, right, let's get that up there now, out of the way so it doesn't get damaged on the floor. But it doesn't have to stay there. That would probably be better above a door. So we might mount that uh, frame and put it above the fireplace, or we may just find somewhere else to put it. We could put it a bit higher up I guess but anyway let us know your thoughts if you've got any ideas for it because uh, it's a nice piece of metal I don't mind the fact there's a piece missing so we'll try and keep it and do something with it dry see what it looks like but uh, I'm probably going to need something a bit more specialist um, I'm pretty certain the, the label's gone on this one but I'm pretty certain this was a mortar cleaner but I think I need something a bit more powerful um, I do have a, an, an electric tool uh, which is a rotary head on it and it spins so it's, it acts like a sander and it's got a metal um, wire brush type of attachment and it will take this off but um, it's gonna be really messy so I'm just trying to avoid that if I can I'm just by trying to keep the um, dust and dirt local but I think I'm gonna end up having to resort to that I'll let that dry and see if it lightens a bit as I said I'm not looking to make it brand new but just something that's um, a bit better than what we have 
Well, for those of you who are Escape to the Chateau fans, and I'm sure you all are, uh, there's an interesting little feature that we've got here, which you'll have seen before in the DIY series. And if you remember um, Amy and Mark from Chateau de la Rosière, um, they uncovered, in one of the episodes, they uncovered a fireplace. And in it, there was a feature, and they were missing part of the metalwork for that feature. But um, their neighbour had it, so uh, the neighbour let them have it back, so they were able to restore that part of uh, their fireplace. So what we have here is two eyelets. And then up here, a little hook, or big hook. And I think what would have happened is there would have been a metal rod through these two eyelets, going up to this hook and perhaps hinged on the hook at the top. And this metal bar would have swung out and on it would have been a hook or this sort of system. Uh, where there would have been a pot so they could actually safely remove the pot from the fireplace. I'm assuming that's what this is. I'm no historical expert on these matters, but they're fairly lined up. Um, I'm assuming that's what it is. If you know different, let me know. Uh, there are two eyelets um, on the other side, but there's no hook up there. But looking at the stonework and the mortar, there's a few gaps in it, so it's possible that that hook could, could have come out. Um, but I think that's possibly what it is, I don't know. Um, I can't remember seeing anything that would have um, gone in here, but maybe, you know, up in the attic or out in one of the barns, we've got something. So, we're going to need three or possibly four of those, depends whether they're compatible with the one we've already got. They're 2980, so that's not too bad. We need to do a little dog leg, because right above there is a roof joist, and so we need to go round it. So we need two of those, which are 18 each, that's 36, so it's not gonna be too expensive. But the one thing we're missing is the ability to get into the pipes through an inspection hole. Uh, they don't seem to have them here, but they have big selections. So yeah, so we're pretty certain we're going to be able to do it ourselves. So Susie's found a brochure, so what we'll do is we'll take that, and then all the various bits should be there, and hopefully there'll be an inspection, an inspection um, piece, so we can get into it to brush. You know, we, you need to sweep these things, so you need to put your brushes in. So you need some way of getting in there, but they don't seem to have it. So we've been to Bricko Cash, and now we're just going into this other Bricko, one Bricko, to see what they've got because the other one didn't have everything there. Chanté.